Thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Presonus recently released Studio One 5.4 and today we're taking a look and seeing what's new. Okay, so this update came with three really great standout features and some really useful quality of life improvements, so let's jump right in. So starting off, we have my favorite new addition and that is the core display. Now to get to the core display, what you wanna do is go to the top right here, click on this little button that'll open up the core track. Once here, right click on this core track lane and then hit core display. That, or you could simply just go over to the top here where you see view and go all the way down to core display. Now once here, you'll see that the core display has three modes, core track, input chord and editor. Now the way this works is that the chord track mode just follows whatever chords are on the chord track. The input chord mode detects any MIDI notes coming into Studio One and then displays that chord. And finally, the editor mode does the same thing as the chord track mode, but in the piano roll or editor, if you will. So let's take a look and see how this works. To use the chord track mode, simply bring up some chords to the chord track and you can do this from an audio file or a MIDI file. I already have a MIDI event out, so I'm going to use that. So then what you wanna do is right click on it, go to instrument parts, and then hit extract to chord track. Now immediately you can see that the chords are brought up to the chord track. And if we take a look again at the chord display, you will see two chords on the screen. The bigger chord in white is the current chord being played while the smaller blue chord is what's coming up next. So then let's just take a quick listen to see what we have here. Now, the most immediate use that I can think for a feature like this is for musicians when tracking. Maybe resize this screen, throw it up on a separate display, and that way the guitarist can follow along. Who knows, but it is definitely handy. The second mode on this thing is the input chord, and this one is super straightforward. If you play any chords into Studio One via MIDI, then it will display it for you here. So for example, here in front of me, I have my Atom SQ, and if I start to play some chords, you should be able to see them up on the display. This is super handy if you're either learning piano and want a visual aid, or if you're like me and you have some chord muscle memory, but you don't always know what you're playing. Finally, the last mode here is the editor mode. And for this, let's open up the piano roll because this is where this mode works. So this mode basically has two functions. The first, acts like the chord track mode, but for the piano roll, because once you have some MIDI program like I have here and you start playback, you will be able to see what chord is currently being played. So let's take a look at that. Now, just in case you're wondering, an A flat major seven is the same thing as a G sharp major seven, and then a B flat is the same thing as an A sharp. I don't know why the chord track divided them into sharps and flats, but they're both the same thing. Now, the second use for this is when selecting or highlighting chords on the piano roll. And this one to me is particularly helpful, especially if you're someone who likes to bring in MIDI chords or MIDI loops. So to demonstrate, if I select a chord here on the piano roll, you will automatically get presented with the appropriate chord name up on the chord display. What's cool is that you don't even need to highlight the whole chord. As long as the note that you select is one of the stack notes in the chord, it will automatically detect the chord it belongs to. The moment you remove a note, however, of course that chord will change and the chord Chord display will reflect that. Now lastly, if you look towards the bottom left of the piano roll here, you're going to see some additional chord information here as well. Now in previous versions of Studio One, we already had the input chord feature, which you can see here, and it basically lets you know what chord you are manually playing. But now with this update, we also have the current chord as well as the selected chord information setting here that does the exact same job as the editor mode, but just down here at the bottom. Okay, so overall, I really love this feature in my only suggestion really would be to make the core display a little easier to access. And once you're told how to get to it, it's not that big of a deal, but I would love to see a button to open up the core display with one click or even the core display itself be more of a forefront feature. I can maybe see the thought process behind this because maybe they thought, well, this is a tool for musicians like with the scenario that I mentioned before. So you bring it up when you need it, but it could also be a huge production and learning tool that would be great to always have at the ready. 
Okay, moving on, the next biggest feature for me is the plug-in nap. Now, honestly, I have never seen anything like this in any other DAW, and if it's out there and I just don't know about it, then let me know in a comment down below, but I have to say this is absolutely genius. In a nutshell, what this thing does is it turns off native and third-party plugins in your session when there's no signal running through them. This is extremely handy if you're trying to save some CPU and run smoother sessions. Now, weirdly enough, this feature is not turned on by default, and I don't know why, but it's not hard to get to. So what you want to do is go to the bottom left here where you see performance and then click on that. Doing this will bring up the performance monitor and towards the top under dropout protection, you're going to see a new checkbox labeled enable plugin nap. When this feature is on, you will see that on the plugin list here at the bottom, some plugins will start to show a moon icon. That icon means that that specific plugin is currently inactive or napping. The moment you run signal through it though, it goes back to normal and all is well. Now, if I'm being honest, I was both really excited and a bit disappointed with this one because when I first saw this feature on the PreSonus highlight reel, I thought it would all also work with VSTs and well, that got me super hyped. From my testing over the last couple days though, it seems that this feature only works with insert effects like EQs, compressors, reverbs and such, not VSTs. Now don't get me wrong, I think this feature is absolutely genius and I love it, but if they wanna take this feature to the next level, the next step would be for it to include VSTs if that's even possible. That alone would make me switch to Studio One if I wasn't already a user. Okay, so next up we have the last of the big feature updates, I would say, and that is the ability to export your songs in multiple formats at once. So let's start off by going to our export window and to do that, go to the top menu here to where you see song and then go down to export mix down. Now that or I believe the max shortcut is command E. Yes, it is. In any case, once you're here, you can see that everything has stayed the same except for one thing and that would be the format section. Now before you only had the ability to export one format along with its respective parameters, but now now you can do multiple if you need to. To do so, just simply check the boxes for the formats that you need, adjust their parameters, and you're off to the races. Now, I'm sure this feature has its place for a bunch of different scenarios, but to me specifically, this is going to be really handy when working with clients because now I can print both a WAV and an MP3 at the same time. What this basically means is that I can send off the smaller MP3 file for the client to inspect, and if they approve, I would already have the WAV file ready to go, so it's just a really good time saver. Now, if you ask me, the next evolution of this feature would be to have the ability to export two versions of the same format. So for example, a wave in 44116 and 4824 or something like that. Okay, last but not least, we have some quality of life improvements. Now, these are not huge updates, which is why I left them till the end, but they do improve the way Studio One operates and just overall improves the experience. So let's run through them. We had M1 support before, but it was through the Rosetta emulator, but as of the 5.4 update, Studio One now has full M1 support. This update makes the auto feature less intrusive and a lot quicker because it now uses cache plugin data, which means that you can actually lower the save time, the auto save time of Studio One, down to one minute and never miss a thing. The plugin manager has gotten a slight facelift, allowing it to now show you information such as what version of your plugin you are on and when was the last time you used them. This is handy to know if you need to either update the plugin or just remove it completely from your system. Studio One now has improved chord detection, making it easier to pick out chords from audio and MIDI. If there is a plugin that you don't use or that's maybe causing you trouble, but you don't want to fully uninstall it yet, you can simply manually block list it now by dragging it into this little box so that way it doesn't show up in Studio One. We got crash reports in the last update, but now Studio One gives us the ability to create a more simplified report based on your input that you can then send off to PreSonus for additional help. This one is tiny, but so helpful. You can now remove all the sends from one track with one single click. We've had the ability to send chord info up to the chord track for a minute now, and as a matter of fact, I showed it earlier with a MIDI event, but now we can do the reverse. If you have chords on the chord track, of course you could always just drag them down, we got them in that last update, but now you could just simply create a MIDI event, right click, go over to instrument parts, and then insert parts from chord track, and you get those chords brought down. Another tiny update, but now you can switch multiple tracks between mono and stereo simultaneously. We've had the copy external files options for songs in the past, but we now also have it available for projects and shows. 
Finally, Studio One now remembers your settings on the export window when you cancel out of the dialog box so you don't have to re-input them once you come back. So for example, let me just switch this over to 64, hit cancel, then come back, and here we are. But there you have it. Those are, I believe, all of the new features that came with Studio One 5.4. Go ahead and update if you wanna try these features out. And look, I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I really appreciate the fact that Presonus listens and keeps on delivering. You know what also delivers when it comes to music though? DistroKid, the sponsor for this video. DistroKid is a digital distributor and with plans starting at $20 a year for unlimited uploads, it is by far the easiest and most affordable way to release your music to all streaming platforms. Not only that, but they also have a ton of additional features that come included with your subscription, like the ability to split revenue and recoup costs from collaborators, get a YouTube official artist channel, send credits to stores, send sync lyrics to places like Instagram and Apple Music, and so much more. Promoting your music is also super easy. DistroKid has a variety of different tools that help you create mini videos, social media promo cards, and even landing pages to share your music and grow your following. As if that wasn't enough, DistroKid also allows you to place your songs on their multiple Spotify playlists and even privately pitch your music to record labels. If you're looking to release your own music, then click the first link in the description to get 7% off your first year. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. I'll be leaving the link down below so you can get 7% off your first year. And as always, like this video if you like to subscribe from that already, but I'll see you on the next one.